Hello, everybody. Here we are. This is season four of our classroom connection videos that I usually do from the health classroom. And this year is quite a bit different, as you can see, because we're not actually in the health classroom. We are remote learning to begin the 2020-2021 school year. But I still wanted to do some of these reflection videos um, besides the podcast that we do with eighth grade. So what I have for you for our week one, season one, or sorry, season four, episode one, is I have four seventh graders that we're excited to get on and talk through some things that are happening through the screen, what they've been frustrated with, what they miss from our standard setup for education, and then some things that are going well too. Okay, so uh, ladies, I'll let you say hello. I've got four people with us. Go, sit, go ahead and kind of wave and you're on. So <laughs> feel free to unmute. Hi, I'm Vinaya. Hi, I'm Deba. Hi, I'm Nanye. Hi, Melissa. All right, great. And so, like I promised um, these four before we started, we're going to try and just have an informal conversation and also just talk about anything that comes up in the meantime. So we got to start with this. We have to start with this question. Uh, obviously, things have been way different through quarantine time and then starting through the screen. So what jumps out at you that has been really... Uh, horrible, lacking, like negative, what do you miss? Um, or what has what have you done to cope positively? So go ahead and take like either of those on. What has really been frustrating and uh, have you found to be um, to be kind of the negative part of this? And then also can you flip it and talk about the positive stuff and how you're coping? So who would like to start? May I start? Go ahead, go ahead, Vinay. So basically, um, I've been trying to cope with all these um, with social distancing and stuff by um, FaceTiming my friends at least twice a week so I can stay in touch with them. And it really sucks that during like school and stuff, you can't really talk to your friends like one on one, like how you did in in person school. Right. So you're just missing that. I, I think obviously we're missing that social interaction like face to face. Does it help to have face-to-face -face through the screen, like FaceTime or even Zoom on school, Denaya, during school? A class. little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like breakout rooms are really helping. Okay. So were you not just staring at a teacher talking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else jump in? What's been the frustrating stuff? I mean, go ahead and, and it's okay to say it. Alyssa, you can... Um, it's... My brother has been really screaming aloud like half the time and I'm trying to tell him to like be quiet because like I'm in a Zoom meeting, be quiet. He's not shutting up. So what I usually do is since he likes to come into my room a lot, I just lock the door and like tell him and then I just put a go away sign. I'm in a Zoom meeting and then just tell my parents that like don't come in, like stay out. Yeah, Dave, I've been the same way. Like um, I have four kids at home and three barking dogs. And so that's been kind of frustrating when I have to be recording from home. It's just not the same setup. So I've been trying to get to this classroom as much as possible to get in the mindset, but also to have a quiet spot to be able to listen and concentrate. Same Alyssa, go here. Ahead. Alyssa or Nanye? Well, I mean, it's been hard with the net with like the internet connection because then like when you're on a Zoom meeting and then the network net, network connection is like stop working, and you have to go, then you're out and then you have to go back in. So that's been frustra uh, frustrating. We even had some issues today. Maybe you didn't, but my first few class periods today, you couldn't even for some reason our grade book and our sign on for Zoom just wasn't working. Um, Nanya, like we haven't frozen. heard from you yet. Go ahead. Okay, so the most annoying thing um, about staying at home all the time is not only did your family get a little bit more annoying, but you like when you're desperately in need to rant to your friends, you have to do it at home where your parents and the people that you're annoyed about can hear you, which is not the best thing when you're trying to talk about this person, your person in the family, and they're right there. So the positive side about all of this, it's basically that you can still get to know your family better. Like sometimes you find little things about them that you never noticed before because you immediately go out to school because your bus ran late. Yeah. And uh, so I always try to focus on the bright side, even though in the background, my brother is playing ukulele. 
<laughs> we can hear that. That's but that's kind of like that's our new, you know, I hate to use this overused phrase, but that's like our new normal is to have things that are happening all simultaneously. And then to, to and it, I've noticed this too, maybe you're the same way. Um, things take a lot longer. So like you have to unmute and then there's a pause and then you're like, am I talking over you or, or it's not as quick of a conversation as in person, you know, um, have you seen, have you seen any class discussions that work in your other classes? Um, what seems to be the pop, what seems to be the way that teachers are coping and you're like, I'm on board, this is working. Or has it all been kind of just black screens and nobody joining in? So can you talk to us about school? through the screen. What really annoys me is that a lot of people just turn off their cameras and it feels like I'm just talking to a black wall when I share to the class. Mm -hmm. And um, I like how the teachers make breakout rooms because you get to discuss with others how I brought it up. And I did experience multiple times like the problem where like we're, go we're talking over each other. Yeah, exactly. You brought up breakout rooms before. For people that don't know Zoom, I, some people are using other things like Google Meets and stuff like that. But it's basically kind of like this place where it gets you a smaller group that you can work with. And um, maybe maybe students are more likely to talk at that point and speak out loud instead of 35 other people. Or do you worry about judgment on sharing your screen? Um, obviously, you're the type of person that's willing to come on a YouTube channel with me. But do you think other seventh graders are worried about that? Maybe. It depends on the person. Mm -hmm. So what else has worked? Is, anybody, is other, other teachers using, um, like, uh, for instance, some apps that work really well that you wanted to name or any games that they're doing? Like, well, yeah, go ahead. Flipgrid, because you get to share your ideas without, like, feeling like everyone's staring at you. You just make a video and post, like, your opinion, your ideas, depending on the teacher's assignment for you. I've heard some students say Flipgrid is also getting overused, that they're tired of making videos. Kind of depends on the student. Uh, go ahead. Any the time, yeah, go ahead. Debo. Half the time um, when I'm in like a, in a breakout room with some in different classes, half the kids like, like are like on new and I'm the only one sharing my like on with my screen on and they're like, like, I see, like, a blank screen, like, are you there? Are you listening to me? Are you even there? Like, <laughs> communicate, please. Imagine how I need something. Teacher, right? You can imagine how we are. Um, does anybody use Nearpod? Are there other teachers using uh, anything else like um, like Flipgrid or, or Kahoot, stuff like that? I mean, I've been using, uh, I've been using like, Destiny Student to, like, read and listen to books because like the library and like the schools like closed so you can't really read books in person but the destiny student has like gives us the option to listen to books or read books online which i like right. i'm getting really tired of using flipgrid because all my teachers are saying here make a flipgrid here make a flipgrid I'm like please stop i'm sick and tired of making flipgrids let me do something else other than flipgrid yeah. find sure. something else but there is fun with Kahoot and GimKit because it's kind of like a game, but at the same time you learn and you yeah. interact. Right, it's a little bit more interactive. Does do any students, uh, teachers use Pear Deck? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 Our yellow teacher uses so much, um, you know, like Pear Deck on for like a lot of vocabulary word parts. Are like here, do Pear Deck. I'm like Pear Deck is way better than Flipgrid, mm -hmm. so better than yeah. nothing. One fun um, interactive thing that they did for Pear Deck is like they did a get to know you thing for all the new students because you can't really get to know the new students in person. So they did like three facts about me and then like you got to like kind of vote which one you think's right or wrong. It's really fun. Pear Deck's also awesome like in advisory and stuff like that because um, it's like when you're always when you're like somebody saying oh yeah time to make a flip grid you want to dive under a bush and say oh yeah i'm sick today <laughs> uh yeah I, I was just around the classes because um i wasn't actually there it was just a picture of me i'm actually really sick <laughs> like because you don't you don't want to go make a video do it like a hundred times over and over again because you know something's not good enough and, Instead, when you're just talking live and you don't really care about your mistakes right now, it's just like 
Paradox easier for you to interact with stuff like that. And you also get to write. Get You get to do a lot of things on Pear Deck. I also use it for math as well. So it's like inst- when a teacher says time to use Pear Deck instead of saying time to use Flipgrid, I silently do a dance. Like something really happy. It's like... It's like something has risen from the heavens or come down. Like, that's how I felt in my mind. Like, that's how much I do not like using Flipgrid all the time. Like, wow. especially when your brother or sibling is like screaming in the background or like trying to learn one, two, three, four, five, six. And like, everybody can hear that on your Flipgrid. Like, they're going to think I'm going to pre I'm going to pre- preschool. And then you're like trying editing it. You tried it a million times. It's still not working out. Peer deck way better. They don't need to hear your voice or your siblings. So it sounds now like some, type. Students, some students like Flipgrid, some like Pear Deck. For people that don't know what we're talking about, they're just different ways of interacting with pictures and video online. Um, instead of just listening and sitting and getting and listening to a teacher speak, I suppose. Sounds like I need to do a little bit more Pear Deck and Gim Kit maybe. Um, okay, so let's let's move on to one last uh, question, if you don't mind. Can you talk? us through and all our our watchers and listeners through some things that we've done recently in health class in particular that have been meaningful for you because we've tried to get into some things with mental health and advocacy as a big skill. So maybe if you don't mind, somebody take the lead. What have you remembered from our recent weeks? What stood Uh, out and has been like this big, this thing that maybe it's not that important, but you've liked it enough. Go ahead, Nani. um, Honestly, like, all these inspiring stories and stuff like that i think that was amazing to listen to the guy with no legs was an absolute comedian i really liked how like i can't feel my hands <laughs> but um there's also the uh poetry like story that we listened to the video the visual like i actually wanted to listen to it again because of how powerful the message was um uh like we've done because- a couple of videos we've done a couple uh, of inspiration videos just in case people missed that right what so what were they going what were those I individuals like, going like through? those individuals who are most likely go, were usually going through a little bit of bullying or like some were like talked about like cyberbullying like one of them she was like not like she couldn't get any body fat on her skin now she looked older than what she really was she was probably in her 20s and she looked um somewhat older she got cyberbullied um online and some there's another one with autism who just like nobody can really understand her because she's trying so hard to tell people what she's going through why she screams why she stomps her feet why she does all of that stuff when it's something like it's something she has to do. Her brain is triggered that way to make sure that she can control it without like um make like doing something worse than what she's doing. So I feel like all those stories all like come back to like that thing like uh how s- there's some sort of like misunderstanding between people because some people think wow his life is so bad without any legs or arms or wow he has cancer he's not ne- like that's so sad like they never really really think about what they're going through unless like they tell their story completely so that's what i took from these stories and stuff like that yeah thanks Danya. anybody else i agree that all the pieces were very moving and it like inspired most of the students to like change or think about what they're doing like the bullying story the one that mr todd done specifically you thought it was very um it was your favorite one because it was so moving to you over the past 10 years it was your favorite video it was very moving to me because like it I um I've seen some people get getting bullied before. I've reported reported it before. It, I feel like the people who have been bullied will stop being bullied by the bullies. Hmm. I really like the TED talk that we saw um, about mindfulness. Yeah. Uh, it it kind of inspired us to like look at one thing and like not worry about all these other things happening, but just like take on one problem at a time. Mm-hmm. 
mindfulness has really helped me because like sometimes like I'm stressed out about doing the homework and I don't get it. I'm like, be quiet. It's be peaceful, Devo. Be calm. You're fine. You got this. Like take up like a ten minute break and like do some meditation and come back to it. Then I not that I'm stressed and my brain can finally figure it out and then I'm like so happy. Yeah, so we've been trying to get, we've used quite a few videos. We do this normally in health class anyway, but we definitely have used some stories, some videos through the screen. Um, and it's, it hasn't just been me, you know, not just a lecture. That's the goal is to give you a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different people's experiences in life to get you to think about your own. And notice those stories recently have not, not just been on mental health and mindfulness, but also adversity. How do people become resilient in life, and then work on advocacy. And that that term, do you remember what that word means, anybody? To be an advocate? Um, to be a supporter of someone and to right. help if someone in need. You got it. So we get to work on that going forward where yeah, now you're going to be active. You're going to be more active and be an advocate. And then um, we'll probably end up using one of our apps. It could be Flipgrid. It could be not. We'll find out. <laughs> and then we'll try and create our own reflection and uh, do something about it instead of just listening and getting. Now an advocacy piece is being, being active in support, awareness, helping. So that's where we're going for our future. Um, Okay, anything that I missed that you remember from, recent, from our recent weeks that uh, has stood out? We t we've talked about most of them. Basically, I agree. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Nanya. I feel like I notice more and more loud sounds. I have no idea. Like somehow I hear an airplane or a garbage truck out of nowhere. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm so surprised because I'm on a Zoom call most of the time. And somehow, so in some way, some loud freaking sound comes out of nowhere. And I don't understand because it was quiet for like 10, like so, for like, it's so annoying because now that we're in quarantine and stuff like that, yeah. it, um, it, there's just more and more like stuff that you notice that you were just gone away from that you didn't really mind at the time but now people start hearing all those background noises during all these meetings and start questioning what you're doing because my cousin was here for a little while and he was screaming in the background and in the chat i heard everybody saying who's screaming which child is that oh my goodness is somebody in hell and i was so i felt so embarrassed that i didn't say anything because didn't know what to do <laughs> I wonder if some of that is because of the mindfulness training we're doing you're starting to become aware of different uh a lot of your surroundings here and now um so the tough part is not to let it be distracting and take you away from whatever task you're working on um okay so is there anything that oh go ahead Vinaya. um i had um something that um kind of like i like that you taught about peer yeah. pressure kind of you kind of talked about that a little bit um yeah, I am, I'm being honest. I kind of um, suffered through peer pressure a bit, but nothing bad. But like I, um, especially like social media wise, my parents don't think I'm responsible enough for social media yet. And so um, you kind of like helped me like learn that I don't need to be peer pressured. I can wait till, yeah, basically. To be on, to be on media, yeah. I, I mean, it's safe to say we're all going to go through some type of pressure at some point. So we did focus on stress and how stress can be positive or negative as well. And we kind of took that into some social media lessons. Yeah, it's been it's been quite an eventful few weeks, even though I only see you a couple of times a week instead of every single day, which is too bad. Um, all right. Do you want to, we're going to have to end the call, but um, the call, <laughs> we're going to have to end the video. <laughs> Uh, is there something that you wanted to say that we didn't get to say, or do you wish that like adults knew something that uh, they don't seem to know or other teachers knew about seventh graders and middle schoolers in general about our current circumstances? Is there something that you're thinking right now that would be really helpful for like me, other teachers, parents, people to know about teenagers dealing with our, our pandemic world and education right now. So I'll let you all talk and then you can have kind of like one last thing to say and then we'll have to say goodbye because we got to get you on your way. I feel like teachers like always like say, be on mute. Why aren't you on mute? And we're like, but the kids, the people just want to talk. They want to have a little bit of social time. They want to 
talk to other people for a change in the classroom and not just talk to the teacher directly. The teachers are like, always be on mute. Don't talk unless if you're asked to. I'm like, yes, I know that's like a good rule, but like sometimes you can't just like say not to talk. Talking is what teenagers and t and middle schoolers do the best. If we don't talk, how are we even going to do anything? Learn. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay, who else? Thanks, Debo. Anybody else? To it's the parents, we love you, but we can get mad sometimes. And like, we'll be like, because we're just angry that social distancing is still a thing. We love you. We're not addicted to our phones. And that's it. Okay. It's what, so, you, like, as the saying, like, Dave said, like, you always have to be muted and everything. It's like saying you're somebody in the desert. Nobody's there. You have no water. Our social life is our water we need to drink it okay like without it nice analogy yeah. Yeah. we're not gonna work <laughs> <We're> not <laughs> Alyssa, anything um that you think parents or teachers should know i think parents and teachers should know that like e-learning isn't easy like there's a lot of sh struggles and hard things that come up with e-learning like even though we've been to like school like uh like sixth grade we just, like it's still different because it's e-learning yeah way different way different um on this side yeah. of things way different as well you know it's all taking a lot of time a lot of effort and i've noticed i have to have a lot of patience for not just other people but with myself so i would recommend that for you and anybody out there watching and listening just keep giving yourself patience and maybe at times like our mindfulness work, just breathe at times, just take a breath and then we'll try and work through it together. Okay, I gotta um, sign off. Maybe I'll have you back or I know that we'll do some work by eighth grade for sure. But thanks for being so talkative, sharing all your thoughts. That was a good start to our season four. This, is, this has been, this will be four school years that I've been trying to reflect with students. So this is exciting to see how we all manage through the screens, but I appreciate kickstarting everything. Um, and then I'll, obviously I'll see you this week. I'll try and get another video out with another group of students in another week or two out there on our YouTube channel. So thanks for tuning in. Okay, ladies, you can say bye. Thank Peace. you. Bye. 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 bye.